Z-E-R-O, huh? It's like he's making fun of us. What do you think? Nothing. What about him? Do you think that's really Zero? There's no way that's him. Didn't I tell you already? Zero is one of us. Yeah, right. Well, even if he wasn't one of us, there's no way that man could be Zero. Uh-huh? Don't you get it? The letters that spell Zero on the TV screen, the captain's clothes he's got on, and of course, the bracelet with a Zero on it. It's too obvious! <laughs> look, look, this is Zero right here. This dead body is Zero. <laughs> Isn't that kind of fishy? You're right. Only an idiot wouldn't see through something like that. No, th that's not the point. So I'm not trying to make fun of them for thinking a trick like this would work. I'm sure they didn't think it would work. Which makes me wonder... I think this is a challenge. A challenge from the person who's really behind all of this. He's making fun of us. Uh? Don't you get it? If whoever killed this guy really wanted us to think this corpse was Zero, they'd never have put a bracelet on him. Walking around with a Zero bracelet would be like hanging a sign around your neck that said, I did it! Anyone with a brain would be able to see that this guy is supposed to look like everything Zero is supposed to be. Just like we did. Uh. The killer must have known we wouldn't think he was Zero and put the bracelet on him anyway. Do you know why? Why? Like I said, he's mocking us. Too bad, suckers. This isn't Zero. Where's the real me, then? See if you can catch me. It's the same bad joke a lot of criminals like to play. They'll just sit back and watch people run in circles. That's really twisted. But it almost seems kind of childish. Yeah, you're right. It's really childish. It's like it's just a game to whoever this person is. That's what seems funny to me. All right, let's get back to the point. Who killed this man? I don't know. And what's this guy's deal? Who is he? How would I know that? If I knew anything, I would have told you. You have no idea who he is. Why would I? Hmm. 
We should check and see if he's got anything on him that might tell us who he is. Give me a hand here, Clover. Huh? We gotta flip him over. How else are we gonna search his pockets? <laughs> okay, uh, fine. Guess I'll do it. Here we go. <clears throat> Huh? Hey, it's the... Lastly, let us discuss how to remove the bracelets. There are only two ways to do so. One, you escape from this ship. Two, more happily, we do zero. In the past, once the bracelet is taken outside the confine of the ship, or the bracelet of the Marin's heartbeat has fallen to zero, it will shut down automatically. Oh god. This man... He's dead, isn't he? Huh? No, it's just... I... I guess I didn't really think about it until right now. If his bracelet's off, that means he's dead. Well, it's pretty obvious that he's dead. You don't really need to look at his bracelet to figure out that he's dead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess you're right. It is pretty obvious. Well, uh, he looks a lot better than the other bodies we've seen, though. <laughs> you know? I mean, if, if there wasn't all this blood, he almost looked like he was still alive. I mean, I know it's kind of a messed up thing to say, but he kind of has it better, you know? Dying from a bomb going off inside of you? I mean, that's just... <sighs> Some of Snake's bones went right through his skin. I, I think the explosion must have thrown him against a wall or something. There was a broken bone just sticking out of his left arm. And, uh, oh. What did you just say? Oh man, uh, I am I I am so sorry. I I shouldn't have said that. I I really don't know what I was thinking. I mean No, that's not what I'm talking about. What did you say about his arm? A uh, arm? Yes, his left arm. You said it, didn't you? Well, yeah, I did, but I mean, I, didn't didn't you see it too? Of course not. I could barely look at him. There's no way I was going to see the details. Are you sure it was his left arm? Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure it was. And he had a broken bone, right? What the hell are you getting at here? Just shut up and answer me! Yeah, he did. Uh, it was pretty bad, too. The bone was sticking out of the arm. <laughs> Clover? <sighs> What's wrong? <sighs> Look, I'm sorry if I said anything. Thank you. Huh? Uh, what are you... Thank you so much, Junbei! Hey, uh, what's going on with you? I'm sorry, it's just... I'm so happy! Why? The body in the shower room... It, it isn't his! It isn't my brother! Huh? It's not Snake! Why on earth would you think that? Because his left arm is... I'm sorry. I really shouldn't be talking about this. Uh... But... He's still alive. I'm... I'm so happy. I'm so glad. Uh-huh. Junpei, you were right. Huh? No matter... 
matter what happens, you can never lose hope. You have to remember what's most important, and that's to have faith and to have love. If you can remember all of those, that'll bring you good luck. Uh, that's... I only made it here because you gave me this. I was suspicious of everybody, and I was angry and miserable. But because I had this four-leaf clover, because of what you said to me, I... Yeah. Thank you so much, Junpei. Oh, uh, if you really want to thank somebody, you, you should be thanking Santa. Well, he was the one who gave me that thing. And the words for each leaf? I got that from him, too. Oh. Um. Uh. Uh. Huh? Did Santa really tell you those things? Yeah, he, he did. Did I uh, say something wrong? Oh no, not at all. In fact, this could be really good news, I think. You think? Santa knew about the words and the clover. The only people who should know about that are the other subjects. Subjects? The other people who were in the experiment nine years ago, with my brother and me. <sighs> but he's blind. And I was part of the Nevada test group. So neither of us would be able to recognize the faces of the people who were on this boat. Whoa, 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 okay, time out. Let's just calm down for a second, okay? Start from the top. Don't start with the end and then jump to the middle. You, you, you gotta start with one and then move to two and three and four and so on. If you don't tell me stuff in the right order, I'm never gonna be able to figure it out. Okay. All right. Let's start with this experiment. What happened on this boat nine years ago? Do you know about morphogenetic fields? Morphogenetic fields? All right, how about this? Theory of the telepathic mechanism. I think Lotus mentioned something like that. Hmm. Telepathy, huh? Well, that's not really it, but I suppose it's similar. So they were testing telepathy on this ship? Yeah, I guess so. So, what exactly did they have you guys do? The same thing that we're doing now. Exactly the same thing. What? The Nonary Game. Nine people were put on this boat, and nine others were put in the building in Nevada, and the game started. Look, I'm sorry, but I, I don't get it. What do the Nonary game and some telepathy experiment have to do with each other? Am I missing something here? The ability to access a morphogenetic field is affected by a couple of things. The first is epiphany, and the other is danger. You know how sometimes when you're up against a really tough problem, and then the answer just kind of pops in your head? That's an epiphany. And what you learn from the epiphany can be transmitted with telepathy. When you add danger to that equation, then it gets easier to transmit that information over telepathy. So you're saying the nonary game was supposed to introduce that element of danger? 
Yeah, but it couldn't be just any old danger. It had to be life and death. It had to be life and death. And... And... Someone did actually die. A girl. Huh. She was on the boat with my brother. I was in Nevada. I never met her, but... I did hear her name. Uh? Her name was... Oh, my apologies. I seem to have disturbed you. Ace! You two must have strong stomachs. I can't imagine how you could stay in this room for so long. At any rate, Junpei, would you be so kind as to come and help me with something? I'm having a little trouble and I could really use your assistance. Uh... Come on, it'll only take a moment. I don't want Ace to hear us. We can talk about this later. Huh? Hey, wait! Junpei? What are you doing in there? Hurry up! Looks like there's something on the cover. A L L I C E. All ice. Alice. Does this mean. What the hell is this? They are hieroglyphs, a form of writing used in ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt? That's right. Can you read them? Of course. I can't. What would make you think I could? What the hell? Whoa, the, the whole thing's like that. 
Huh? What's this? Oh, a, a keycard. Uranus. That's the Uranus symbol. Something's written on the bottom. Bottom deck library. This must be the key to the library, then. So it would seem. Bottom deck library. Oh. Seven said something like. Alice, Alice sleeps, sleeps in a small, in a small chamber, chamber past the past forest, forest of knowledge, knowledge beneath, beneath the navel of the gigantic. gigantic. Could beneath the navel mean the bottom deck, and the forest of knowledge is the library? Then could Alice be in a room somewhere beyond the library? What's wrong? Something on your mind? Um, yeah. I just remembered something. Is that so? What about? Well, don't laugh, okay? The Egyptian Priestess and Ice Nine. Interesting. And the woman who wouldn't melt, who was recovered from the Titanic disaster? They called her All Ice, which eventually turned into Alice. And she was purchased by an English millionaire who called himself Lord Gordain. According to Seven, this ship is where he hid Alice. And you think that he hid her in a small room, beyond the library on the bottom deck? Yeah. W well, I mean, it is just a theory. Hmm. Junpei, have you ever heard of the term CAS? CAS? It stands for Cells Alive System. It is an advanced technology for freezing and preserving organic matter. Put simply, it is a technique that allows one to freeze things without the formation of ice crystals. Normally, if you freeze something fresh, water within its cells expands as it crystallizes, damaging the cell membrane. CAS, however, works differently. The object to be frozen is supercooled using magnetic fields and then frozen instantly and uniformly, giving ice crystals no time to form. It was originally developed for the preservation of food as an alternative to the normal freezing process. Now, however, there are rumors that it can be used for other things. What do you mean, other things? Well, there are obvious medical uses, but perhaps also space travel. Space travel? Are you serious? Surely you've heard of suspended animation, cryogenic freezing? It's a fairly common idea in science fiction books and films. People are sometimes frozen for especially lengthy journeys through space. Whoa, 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 wait a minute there. Are you saying that Alice was frozen using that cast thing? Well, I'm sure the possibility is quite low, but it is a possibility. If this special ice you call Ice-9 does indeed exist, and Cass were used to freeze her into that sort of ice instantaneously. You think she could be alive? Well, I can't say for sure, of course. I'm only talking about possibilities. The melting point for Ice-9 is 96 degrees, right? If she were put somewhere where she could reach that temperature... <laughs> That's nuts! Are you really saying she could have defrosted and started walking about? You're quite right. It does sound unbelievable. But if she had, then we would have an explanation for the man we found dead on the floor. You mean the guy dressed like a captain? Yes. He was dead when we found him. Clearly, he was murdered. 
But if he was murdered, then by whom? It couldn't have been one of us. That would be impossible. In order to enter the captain's quarters, one must first open door one. That door that requires the earth key prevented us from accessing door one. Who was it that opened that door? Santa and Lotus. Right. Clearly, the two of them could not have opened door one, or any other door for that matter. Who else then could have done so? Nobody. After Santa and Lotus used the Earth Key, they turned back and met up with me in June. Then we returned to the large hospital room and found Ace, Seven, and Clover. While we'd gone into the shower room, Ace, Seven, and Clover had stayed behind. But it's impossible for those three to open door one. But what about when June and I took the elevator to door two? No, still won't work. We were only gone five minutes. No human being could have run to the captain's quarters, killed that guy in there, and run back that fast. It would be impossible for any of us to be the murderer. That being the case, who could have killed him? Wouldn't it make sense if this killer was someone who had been in the ship for some time? <sighs> A person like that would know the ship well. They would know the locations of all the hidden passages and secret doors. The numbered door would mean nothing to someone like that. It would be a simple thing for them to enter the captain's quarters. Then you're saying the killer was Alice? Well, this is all only one possible theory. All ice, Alice. Is she really somewhere on the ship? Maybe this card will give me access to the forest of knowledge. And the big mystery. What could be there beyond the forest of knowledge? Anyway, whatever. It's gonna have to wait. I can't do anything right now. I'll come back to this later. Thank you. 
All right, let's go. That's the next door. Wait, a piece of paper. This is... Map of the ship's interior for a deck. <laughs> What's wrong? I found a map for this floor. I see. Well, that was anticlimactic. I should keep this, though. Hey, uh, where's Clover? Damn it, what the hell is she up to? Clover! Huh? Huh? <sighs> what the hell are you doing? Nothing. What do you mean, nothing? What the hell is that? What? You've got something in your pocket. What is it? Oh, this? Uh, um, this is... a note. A note? Yeah, I found it in the pocket of the guy with the captain's clothes. It said something about the darkness of the sinister hand or something. What the hell? Uh, let me see it. Uh, no, not right... Hey, Junpei, Clover! What are you two doing? Hurry up! He's getting mad. I'll show it to you later, all right? Come on, we gotta hurry! Uh, from the look of that pocket... It doesn't particularly look like just a note. Jeez, what are you thinking? Uh, for crying out loud. The big stairs. Huh. So this is where it ends up. Just like it says on the map. Ace, did he head down? Oh, there he is. Look! The four others are there, too! Really? Let's join them! Jumpy! Clover! What's up? We found it! Found what? We found it! What did you find? The last door! We found door nine! What? Come on! Just follow us! We'll explain on the way! Okay. Well, if that's the case... Wait for me. We should get going as well. Jumpy! We finally made it! Yeah, it's finally time. We've reached the end. Something's bothering me. Only three to five people can go through the number door. Seven of us are on our way to door nine. That means that, best case scenario, there will be two of us who have to stay behind. Two people. Is there a way? 4.30. We've only got 90 minutes left. I've got no time to wonder about it now. Hey! Junpei! June! What the hell are you two doing? Hurry it up! Let's go, Jumpy! Yeah. I know I told you I'd explain it earlier, but... Honestly, there ain't much to explain. After we split off from you guys, the four of us got into the elevator on the left, and that took us to the other side of the grate. After that, we headed down another hallway. It took us toward the bow, and eventually to the number six that you two found earlier. 
opened it and kept going. There was another locked door behind it, like usual, but this time we had to complete two different areas before we could unlock it. Once we were through that door, there was another hallway that went the other direction, toward the stern. So, on your way, you found the elevator. That's right. So, in other words, you kind of did a lap, huh? You came from that side to this side. Yeah. So, where's the number nine door? Over here. Follow me. Uh. By the way... You know... It's because of Santa that we're all here right now. Huh? That all seven of us are going to door nine. What? You don't get it? Santa, Seven, and Lotus. What's their digital root? Nine. It's nine. That's right. They could have just left me behind and kept going if they'd wanted to. They didn't. Yes, because Santa wouldn't let them. He said we can't leave June and the others behind. That's why we went looking for you guys. And then you got on the elevator and went back to the central staircase. That's right. Hmm. Well, I wouldn't have called that one. Uh, that Santa would be the one to stick up for you. that Seven and Lotus said they wanted to leave me behind. We were just talking about it, and Santa objected to it first. Is that so? We're here. So, is this... Yeah. There's no other place for us to go. Nope. Just look around. There's a big old iron wall at the end of the hallway. The other hallways on the left and right are blocked by metal grates. I see. All right, let's get moving. <sighs> oh. No way. <sighs> The Nine Door. We're finally here. No doubt about it. This is Door Nine. <laughs> oh, finally! This is the last... Junpei, look behind you. Behind? What? Why? A door and a nine. There's another one? Hey, what the hell? What the hell is going on here? There's a red there too! That means... And of course it won't open. But why? Why the hell are there two doors? Do you think perhaps one is the right door and the other is the wrong one? about that. It seems unlikely. What makes you say so? Well, think about all the rooms we've been through so far. They're full of puzzles, but there are always hints about how to solve them. I'm pretty sure there aren't any rooms where we just had to go with our best guess and leave it to instinct to solve the puzzle. think that at the very end of the game, Zero's going to suddenly throw in something that depends entirely on luck? Then you're saying there's some sort of hint in this room? No, I don't think there's a hint anywhere in here. I searched it very well when I was in here before. I didn't find anything that might have been a hint, though.
That means... Yeah, both of these are the right door. I mean, if you think about it... Zero never actually said there was only one door with a nine on it. It is hidden, but an exit can be found. Seek a way out. Seek a door that carries a nine. So if there are two number nine doors... If we split it up, right? That's not gonna work. You've got a notebook and a pen, right? Can I borrow them? Yeah, here. Look at this. You get it? The numbers on the top are all the combinations with digital roots of nine. The numbers on the bottom are the people who don't fit. There's only eight possibilities if we split up into two groups of three or four people. So... If three people go through the door, then four are left behind. If four go through, then three are left behind, right? Yeah. No way. to think of it. What is this room? It looks like it's set up for some kind of ceremony. But what kind? Is that an altar? Possibly be. Okay, I give up. I give up. I figured if we sat around here long enough, someone would volunteer. But... I guess nobody's got the guts to do it. What are you talking about? What? You guys didn't figure it out yet? What? Fine, fine, let me enlighten you. Clover was mostly right with her little explanation earlier, but she missed something. She wasn't really wrong, she just... Ah, screw it! Let me just write it out. If you're trying to leave with a group of three and a group of four and get everybody out, Clover's right. But there's another way. Only one combination, though. If you split us up into groups of three, three, and one, you can make this combination. Wait, this means... Don't get me wrong here. I'm not trying to copy Ace or anything like that. Even if he hadn't been the hero back in the big hospital room, I'd still be saying the same thing. The same thing? Are you saying? Yeah, I am. I'll stay behind. Uh, uh. <laughs> uh, uh. Why are you acting so heroic all of a sudden? Are you some kind of idiot? Now, I'm completely against this. I'll be goddamned if I'm going to have to owe you for getting out of here. I'm against it, too. I didn't want to leave Ace behind, and I don't want to leave you, either. I don't like that idea. There's got to be other options. I disagree as well. I can't say I care much for you being the hero. Well, there you go, Seven. Proposal denied. Clover's right. There's got to be a better way than this. Hmm. Doesn't make any sense. Whoa, hold on a minute. I haven't said anything yet. 
Are you... agreeing? You want to leave him here? Nah, I'm against it. I don't want to leave Seven here alone. Then I don't see how it matters. I said alone. Huh? I said I don't want to leave Seven alone. What the hell are you... What? You don't get it? I can't leave just one person. I need two more. Three people, including Seven. I'll be leaving behind three people. That's my proposal. No. Those are my orders. What do you mean, orders? What the hell makes you think you can order us around? Who the hell's gonna listen to you? You all will. In three seconds, you won't have a choice. What? Three, two, one. Ah! See? I told you.